The solution to the Schrodinger equation for the hydrogen atom gave us wave functions and energies, and we found that the wave function had three quantum numbers associated with it, n, l, and m sub l. But that's not quite uh, the total number of quantum numbers. As you remember from introductory chemistry, there are four quantum numbers that specify the particular state of an electron. So there is more. Wait, there is more. Uh, there was an experiment uh, back in the early 1920s by Stern and Gerlach, uh, which indicated that electrons have what is known as spin angular momentum. So what was this experiment that they did? Well, here it is from the Wikipedia article. Um, what you have here is a furnace, and the furnace, you put in the furnace some silver uh, atoms or silver, solid silver, and the furnace heats it up and what you get is uh, silver ions, or no, sorry, silver atoms, not ions, silver atoms coming out of this furnace and going down here. This is an inhomogeneous magnetic field, so the silver ions travel down here. If the silver ions have uh, associated with them some angular momentum, and if the angular momentum can be quantized in only two positions, then you'll get a beam of atoms coming up this way, corresponding to one uh, direction of the angular momentum, and a beam of atoms going down this way, corresponding to the other direction of angular momentum. And silver has just one unpaired uh, electron, silver ion, or silver atom, sorry. And classically, if angular momentum is not quantized, you expect some sort of continuous distribution here. Well, what you get is just what's shown here, these two, just you get two spots of silver ions on this uh, glass plate here. So how do you explain that? Well, um, Stern and Gerlach, when they did this experiment, it was actually before Schrodinger had developed his uh, wave equation. It was trying, they were trying to verify that angular momentum was quantized, and um, they were trying to verify that uh, Niels Bohr had proposed that. And so they think they thought that this actually showed angular momentum was quantized. Well, yes, it is, but the angular momentum they show, uh, showed was quantized was not the angular momentum associated with electron on a sphere. It was an intrinsic angular momentum. The electron itself, if you just have a free electron without any proton, it doesn't have to be constrained to go on the surface of a sphere. That free electron has associated with it a spin and therefore has associated with it an angular momentum and that is angular momentum uh, we'll describe down here. Uh, you actually uh, don't have to propose that the spin itself has an intrinsic angular momentum. If you formulate um, quantum mechanics using relativistic uh, uh, considerations like Dirac did, then you find that the spin, the intrinsic spin angular momentum comes out of, of the relativistic consideration of quantum mechanics. And uh, what you find, just like when you have this uh, so-called orbital angular momentum, uh, because the electron is traveling around in a surface of a sphere and therefore it has some uh, angular momentum, uh, so too, the spin itself has an angular momentum. One way to make a model of that is to say the uh, electron spins around its own axis. This is just a model, but might be useful. Spins around its own axis, and since it's charged, and spinning charges give rise to uh, angular momentum, or spinning masses give charge to angular momentum, therefore you have um, angular momentum, intrinsic. Anyway, the uh, the simil similarities with the Schrodinger equation, now spin. Now spin, you know, Schrodinger equation you can talk about in terms of x, y, z, or r, theta, phi, in terms of actual physical dimensions. But the spin doesn't have any physical dimensions. So this uh, wave function corresponding to spin uh, is not a function of spatial coordinates. You'll find, however, there is an operator, just like there was an angular momentum squared operator, the spin squared, uh, S squared operator, the intrinsic spin operator, is a, um, is a um, measurable quantity, is a Hermitian operator, and you can define um, from that a wave function that doesn't depend on spatial coordinates. Give the wave function back again, you'll find that angular momentum is um, quantized in terms of h bar. The um, 
And here it is, the angular momentum along the z-axis is quantized in terms of h-bar. m sub s could be plus or minus one-half for electrons. So electrons themselves have spin. They have two values of m sub s, plus and minus one-half. And the total spin for that is uh, one-half. So that you can have plus one-half h-bar or minus one-half h-bar. They differ by uh, a factor of h-bar. So. There we have it. Additional information about the wave function. They have to tack on to that wave function uh, that depends on spatial coordinates, a wave function that it due to intrinsic spin. So finally, <laughs> this is the total uh, hydrogen atom wave function. We have the radial part, and then we have the angular parts, one that depends on theta and one that depends on phi, and this is all the spatial stuff tacked on to that is the spin wave function which will give you either spin up or spin down for an electron plus one half or minus one half so this is the total hydrogen atom wave function consisting of spatial part and spin part